Ah, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, a game where men, children go flying across the sky, hyped up on Mountain Dew Code Red while shooting grenades out of their Assassin's Creed wrist launchers. What a wonderful time to be born. I'm Sir Soapy, and welcome to Is It Worth It? Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Call of Duty Advanced Warfare sold 3.72 million copies in the first week alone in the United States. I know that there was some rumors and some critique that this game was not going to sell nearly as many copies as a lot of the other games, but obviously those people were wrong. Obviously a very good selling game, and it was also made by Sledgehammer Games and published by Activision, of course. To start off, we're going to be talking about the gameplay. Obviously, that's how these things go. To start, the weapons and the gunplay are honestly pretty nice. There may not be a large selection of guns that you can choose from, but there are some new additions like the laser beam guns. Those are pretty fresh to the series, haven't seen anything like that before in any Call of Duty. And they're, they're a really nice addition, even if they do piss me off, because they're kind of frustrating to fight against, but they're fair. They're pretty badass. Just a little qualm that I have with the guns, though, is the submachine guns seem to be a little too good for my preference. I've been killed long range many a times by these motherfuckers, and in combination with some of the exo abilities, they can be very, very annoying just flying around, killing you from all different angles, even across the map, which doesn't seem like it should be a thing. They also added modified weapons to the game, or special weapons, I'm not really sure what the official title for them are. But you get them as a random drop in your supply drops, and it is basically a gun that have their stats slightly changed and some have the visual look of them changed as well. So for example, my favorite, as you'll be seeing in this gameplay a lot, is the HBR A3 Average Joe. It gives you plus one damage, minus two handling, and plus one range. So as you can see, it takes away something, but then buffs something else. It's it's pretty cool addition to the game, but it could be a little bit forgettable at times. Like. I just kind of get used to it, and I don't really feel like I'm at a disadvantage for using it because of the minus two handling and or, or anything. The exosuits are honestly another really nice surprising change to the game, and it adds a lot more depth to it. Jumping around like a spider monkey on speed adds just a level of survivability that the other games didn't have. If someone saw you in the other game, and you didn't see them, you were dead. But if I get shot in the back, I can double jump up in the air and press D two times and I'll shift over to the right and I'll land up on top of a building and be able to run away. So it works out pretty well. The maps are designed around these exosuit abilities. So it's very, very nice and very creative. It kind of reminds me of Unreal Tournament-esque fighting. It kind of brought me back a little bit. So that's a very, very cool addition. Something that's not so good in my opinion is the actual abilities of the exosuits. Um, I just kept on getting frustrated with these things. There are, a, I think, six different abilities. I don't have the number off the top of my head right now. And there's something like Stim that will heal you. And there's something like the exo shield. But these things, like I said, they just kind of, I just kind of got fed up with them. I would be holding an, a point or trying to hold a, a flag and capture the flag. And I'll be using my shield, and a shield doesn't really feel like it's really any use. It doesn't last very long. It doesn't really cover much surface area. And I just died almost every single time I tried using it. Same with the Exo Stim. Great idea. If I get hurt, I would try jumping up, run, maybe double jumping into a window. But since you literally fucking fly in this game, people would be right on me. And trying to heal myself would be pretty much useless. Especially when there's already a self-heal ability. If you get away and you're that far away, then you're probably going to survive anyway. Unless you're still all around the corner, obviously. So, I just feel like these abilities are a little bit too fast-paced for this game. A few more things I wanted to touch on before I tell you guys my consensus is, for one, the map selection feels very small. Even if they are well-designed, I kind of got a bit bored after playing the game for about 20 hours. Because you get the same three or four maps for each game mode and if you say you want to go play another game mode then some of those maps are shared so if I want to play de team deathmatch and then I go to play search and destroy or domination sure I'll get two other maps but then I'll get two maps that I just got finished playing five or six games in a row on so I feel like it's just another setup for Call of Duty to add a bunch of a bunch of more DLC maps for $15 and it's kind of a shame so that's something that was kind of a negative experience for me and became a bit tedious um, secondly, something that I wanted to add is the character customization to the game is honestly pretty badass. I mean, you look the characters in the game with the cool masks and the sunglasses and the nice hats and the different uh, exosuits and stuff. It gives a certain 
personality to each uh, soldier out on the battlefield instead of just a gen generic like U.S. soldier or Russian Russian soldier that you're used to seeing in the game. So that's that's a pretty nice addition. But once again, something that I kind of look past when I'm playing the game. I don't stop and stare and be like, that's fucking beautiful. Something that I've definitely done in something like CS:GO or Team Fortress 2. And lastly, the PC port and the lack of dedicated servers is something that I wanted to touch on before I tell you guys my consensus. This time around, the PC port was very good. I got a constant 60 plus FPS, unlike Ghosts. I didn't play Ghosts because I heard how bad the PC port was. Uh, but I do get a constant 60 FPS with high, with setting, with all my settings on high and anti-aliasing. And there is an FOV slider, thank God. Goes all the way up to 90, so that's awesome. That's very, very good. But even with all these nice uh, changes to the PC port, I still have a shitty taste in my mouth because of this shitty, shitty matchmaking system. I had a horrible time with the matchmaking system in the first week and a half, almost two weeks of the game, where I would get halfway through loading, and then it would just freeze, and then zip across the screen, and then just boot me out for whatever reason. I have no idea why. Uh, my NAT type was fine, so I was getting some I was getting some Friendly nightmares from my Modern up. Warfare 2 days where you'd be sitting waiting for 10 minutes and you would have to mess with your port forwarding and all that garbage. It it was giving me uh, some terrible flashbacks. So it, it just, I please Call of Duty, please add dedicated servers. I would love you. So after all that, I can now tell you guys my consensus on whether or not this game is worth your time and your mom's hard-earned money. And before I do that, I just wanted to say that this game gave me a very, very good first impression. If this was a first impression series, I would have hyped this game up a lot and said it was wonderful and great. But there are some problems with this game that's going to make me say no. This game is not worth your time and money. If you're not a hardcore Call of Duty fan like me and you're hoping for something completely revolutionary, this almost seemed like something like that. It seemed like it was a really good step in the right direction. And it is. It's a good step in the right direction. But it's almost like there's some sort of like fairy dust or mountain dew waterfall that ran out. And now it's kind of like I'm seeing the true game. And it's just... It's nice. Like I said, it's a step in the right direction. I enjoy some of the new weapons. I enjoy the modifications. I think there's a cool addition. The customization of your characters is nice. But the shitty uh, matchmaking and the monotonous maps that you keep on having to play on the same handful of maps and even you have to experience them on other game modes, it's just not... It just doesn't feel fresh anymore after 30 hours. And that became a very big problem for me. I feel like if you're going to spend $60, especially on a very multiplayer focused game, you shouldn't feel like you've done everything in the multiplayer after 20 or 30 hours of gameplay. It just it shouldn't feel like that. And I, they were on the cusp of making a great game. I but I just they just fell short in this one. So if you're a die-hard Call of Duty fan and you love Call of Duty combat, this is going to be excellent for you. You're going to love this game. This is going to be the perfect game for you. But if you're like me and you play other games, then this isn't going to be anything but a bit of a facelift that you'll get over very, very quickly. And that's why I had to give this game a no. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Any constructive criticism or questions or comments, I'll be acknowledging in the comments section below. Any links or important information will also be in the description of this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. See you guys next time.